This is a kind of a fun one. Let's take a few minutes to talk about black holes. Truth be told, we don't really know a lot about black holes or singularities. Not naming any names here, but there are actually some scientific institutions that have published videos describing them as gigantic vacuum cleaners in space, or big sucking blob monsters that absorb everything in sight. But that's not really scientifically accurate because it has no structure to it. What we do know about them is rather interesting. With our modern mathematics and physics, we understand that at the center of the black hole is a space with zero volume and yet infinite gravity. Infinite gravity, so powerful that light itself cannot escape its pull. Infinity. You know what that means, right? It means that the speed of light isn't the fastest thing in the universe, as we have believed for so long. There's something faster, which has some relationship and connection to gravity. Whether faster than light is something specific to black holes or if they're found elsewhere in the universe, that's not yet officially scientifically known. But I'd reckon that at the heart of light itself, inside the photon of light in the nucleus of a subatomic particle, at a level so small that our technology cannot even see, that infinity is also present. So I want to show you something interesting and also a little funny. Just flow with me on this. It's pretty funny if we can lighten up about ourselves. See. It appears as though pictures such as this have been used for years and years to try and describe the structure of space and black holes. Among all of these pictures, there is this common trait that I saw in all of the diagrams. Yes, the space is curving, but the space is curving from a point of flatness. Over and over, all over the world, space-time is often described as if it's this big flat plane out in space, and that the planets, the stars, the black holes just sort of create gravity around the fabric of space, and it just made me laugh. I mean, come on, this is a little funny. You know, first we had to fight our way to try and prove that the world wasn't flat, and it looks as though we're having to do the same thing with the universe. But don't worry, I'm pretty sure that most people would agree that space itself isn't flat. And I'm also pretty sure that these scientific institutions don't genuinely believe that space is flat. I hope. I understand that this is a technological trial of ours. We're not exactly sure what it looks like, because it's probably like being underwater, and there's waves constantly moving from all different sources. Gravity from this star, and that star, and this galaxy, and this black hole. It's a jumble, it's messy, and we don't know how to visualize it. We don't even know which way is up. If there even is an up. For all we know, there isn't. Direction only happens in relationship to something else. And so even if our whole galaxy is a particle floating around in a great deep ocean on another planet in a super universe, Unless we can actually demonstrate that scientifically, we're pretty much just throwing darts in the dark here. Now the original reason I brought this up was this whole flat universe model. We need to find a better way to describe space-time and the shape of black holes. And it's actually starting to happen. See, now pictures like this are starting to gain steam on the internet. These concepts seem to accurately demonstrate the toroidal flow of the cosmos and the patterns in geometry that are at the heart of the ways that reality is constructed. But why is this important to the world? Honestly, I think it helps people see how these same patterns are present everywhere, from whirlpools, galaxies, atoms, and even in our own bodies. We grow and build a sense of connection with everything around us. Now, I wanna present an idea with you. This is an idea that has sort of been mainstream-ish for a while, but it never really got the big attention from scientific institutions or the media because we have a hard time seeing this to be demonstrated out in the universe. At the same time, that's how we evolve in science, is we have to make predictions and then try and demonstrate and find examples of these things to see that they are in fact true. Or find the way in which it is true, how it does work. Just because this way isn't right, doesn't mean that it can't work another way, such as this. You know how black holes absorb light and matter and pretty much everything? That light obviously must go somewhere. The laws of a toroidal field dictate that what goes in must come out, and what goes out must come back in. Now, the problem was that we've never really been able to follow or watch or see where energy and light goes once it goes into a black hole. We are blind once things pass the event horizon. All we know is that the laws of physics break down, infinity becomes reality, and anything is possible. Some theories about this, as well as a beautiful demonstration by Neil deGrasse Tyson in episode four of The New Cosmos, discusses the idea of going through a black hole and coming out in another universe or a parallel dimension. In the case of black holes, at the point of singularity, the fabric of space itself is said to break and all of the different universes become connected. We can also imagine that perhaps small black hole vacuums are what create stars. 
You know, stars form from collapsing clouds of space dust. And perhaps at the core of that fusing is that infinite space of fusion and infinity, the singularity. I know, I know. What does it have to do with you, right? Everything. It has everything to do with you. And we're going to get to that. We have a new episode planned for next week, so stay tuned. Oh, and if you haven't seen this yet, just, yeah. For me, I'm just in awe that there's so much about reality that we really don't know. The universe is so vast and so much greater than ourselves, and we're a part of that whole. We make it up, and without us, it would be incomplete. And that's pretty awesome.